Vitalik knew very well that the house on the edge of the forest was off-limits. His grandfather had been telling him this since he was a child. That's no place for games, Vitalik. The house is old, it could collapse. And how the forest hasn't swallowed it yet. It's as if someone is guarding it. Maybe the spirit of the owner. A forester used to live there. He made sure there were no fires, that the trees didn't get sick, that the hunting of animals was done in its proper time. All the villagers respected him, and they took care of the forest. What a place it was back then. You'd go into the forest for a couple of hours and come out full of mushrooms and berries. And the hunting was always good. But one year we had a lot of poachers. The forester did what he could. But what could he do? He was alone after all. And then the police came. We thought our forester had caught someone. But they were looking for the visiting hunters who hadn't returned on time. Of course, they went to the forester to help with the search. They didn't find anyone, neither our forester, nor the hunters. They were here one minute and gone the next. Well, we locked up his house afterwards, boarded up the windows. I remember, there was such a storm after he disappeared. A lot of trees fell down, all our paths were blocked. And very soon the forest became like a wild animal. It wouldn't let you in. It hid the mushrooms and berries from your eyes. There were fewer animals and birds. The place became impoverished without a master. We tried to walk along the old paths through the forester's clearing. His house was leaning, but it was still standing. But it wasn't overgrown with grass. I'm telling you, maybe it's being guarded by its owner? And everyone thinks so. That's why we avoid this place now. It's not worth disturbing the forester. Years passed, Vitalik grew up, and his grandfather became very old. So at a family council, they decided to move him to the city, closer to his children and grandchildren. Vitalik went to the village to help with packing things. The guy, although he had become quite an adult, always remembered the mysterious house of the missing forester with a sinking heart. So he decided that he would definitely go there now. After all, this was his last chance. The grandfather seemed to understand his grandson's plan. Vitalik, are you going to the forester's house? You'd better not go. There's no need to disturb him. What's interesting there? Vitalik hid his eyes. He didn't want to lie to him, nor did he want to listen to warnings and lectures. The next morning... The guy grabbed a basket and went into the forest. The plan was to look at the forester's house, go inside if possible, and then pick some berries. Vitalik made his way through the windfall for a long time. There was a path, but it was still hard to walk. The forest seemed to not want to let people in and share its riches. Twenty minutes later, Vitalik came out to the clearing. A black, crooked hut stood in the middle of the clearing. A chill ran down Vitalik's spine. He didn't want to go inside anymore. It seemed to the guy that the few birds had fallen completely silent. Even the wind died down, everything froze. Vitalik hesitantly moved from his spot. Approaching the house, he quietly knocked on the door. May I come in? The guy asked loudly and looked at the old barn lock hanging on the door. Apparently, I can't. Vitalik picked up a heavy stone from the ground and swung it at the lock. The second blow was not needed. The guy opened the door and looked inside. Sunbeams were breaking through the cracks, slightly illuminating the room. Vitalik slowly walked forward, examining everything that was inside. Dishes lay in a neat pile on the dusty table. A bed made with a blue blanket. Firewood near the stove a towel carelessly thrown on a stool. How long had this house been standing without an owner? It's as if a couple of years have passed, not several dozen. How is this possible? Suddenly, it seemed to Vitalik that the air in front of him was trembling like over hot asphalt. The guy frowned. He was already ready to turn around and rush outside. But at that moment, the door behind him slammed shut. Vitalik froze. 
Silence. You could only hear his heart pounding. The guy slowly turned around, closed his eyes, and flung open the door. He found himself in a completely different place, somewhere in the middle of a dense thicket. The air was trembling. Right in front of him stood two guys and a little old man with a gun on his shoulder. But no one paid any attention to Vitalik. It seemed that they simply didn't see him. Vitalik looked around in fright. Why did he end up here? Where was the forester's house? Grandpa, we're telling you nicely. We're hunting for ourselves. Just for fun. Take the money and go away. Don't interfere, or it will be worse. And no one will find out, said one of the guys. The forest will find out, I will find out. Do you think I haven't seen your snares? I can smell you poachers, the old man said menacingly, taking the gun from his shoulder and pointing it at the guy. Calm down. Calm down. Grandpa. Nobody needs problems. The hunters calmed him down. But suddenly, as if by agreement, they pointed their guns at the forester. Three shots rang out almost simultaneously. The forester and one of the guys fell. The second froze in place. The forester groaned softly. Lying on his side, he fired another shot. The second hunter fell right into the honeysuckle bush. The air trembled more and more, blurring everything around. Vitalik watched with wide eyes as the grass, bushes, and branches seemed to engulf the three men in fast forward. Creeping bindweed entwined fingers, faces, and torsos. Long, thin branches pulled the bodies to the roots and covered them with thick foliage. Literally a minute later, there was no trace of the people left. What was that? Why, how, and why could the forest hide everything so quickly? The air trembled even more, swirling around Vitalik. He squeezed his eyes shut and covered them with his hands. The loud chirping of birds made the guy open his eyes. He stood in the doorway of the forester's house and looked into the forest. Why did they show me this? What should I do? Whispered Vitalik. Tell the people. A voice came from behind. The guy turned around. Behind him was the barely discernible figure of the forester. I guarded the forest for so many years, and he protected me as best he could in the end. He hid me from view, covered my tracks. He won't let anyone in there. No one will find me or those scoundrels. I didn't realize right away that I was D.E.A.D. I didn't realize right away that I wouldn't be able to leave. But I can't find peace. The forest is holding me. The branches are strong, tenacious. They won't let go. You're the only one who came to my house. No one else has been here for a long time. They walk along the edge of the forest. They avoid my clearing. They are afraid of me, of the forest. Well, my domain ends with this house. I can't go any further. Vitalik looked at the ghostly forester with his mouth open, not believing that this was happening in reality. I'll tell them. The guy managed to squeeze out. The figure completely dissolved into the air. And Vitalik, without looking back, ran to the village. Grandpa was receiving guests. The neighbors had come to say goodbye. Running into the house without saying hello, Vitalik quickly told what had happened. I guess we need to find him in the forest. Maybe he'll lead us out somehow. I don't know. The news quickly spread through the village. And a couple of days later, several volunteers went into the forest. Vitalik was among them. Well, this is where we need to be, said the guy entering the forester's house. Maybe he'll show us where to go next. At that moment, Vitalik felt someone grab his wrist. The forester literally led the people to where he had been lying all these years. Soon Vitalik took his grandfather away from this village forever. And the forest again began to let people in. Bright spots of berries emerged from under the foliage. The fallen trees, as if by magic, turned into dust opening up paths. Animals and birds reappeared, and the forester's house soon disappeared from sight altogether. It merged with the forest, 
overgrown, but the memory of the forester still lives on in this village.